Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Anuska Taylor. So great to be here. So do you find yourself in situations where no one listens to you? Maybe it's at work, maybe it's at home, maybe it's just everywhere. And you feel like either people talk over you or they just completely ignore you. I think this is actually very common. And so I want to talk more about this topic today. And I want to also share how you can step into your power more and truly be heard from that kind of more empowered place. So this is something that I have experienced previously. I've done a lot of inner work around this, which is kind of what I want to share with you today, because it really held me back for a long time. And I really felt like, you know, the world was against me and no one was listening to me. So I want to sort of talk a little bit more about this from the psychological perspective. Now, as a voice coach, I work a lot with many clients on this. And obviously we're approaching it from the voice and developing the voice and finding more authority and assertiveness and strength and power in the voice. But ultimately the mind is driving the voice. Ultimately, how we really feel and think about ourselves on the deepest level is going to be reflected in our voice. So we have to work on the internal as much as the external. Now, often what we do in these situations, which was where I used to be, is we, when we feel like people aren't listening to us, it usually might make us feel angry or frustrated, or maybe even we want to cry or we feel really sad. But what we'll normally do is we'll either just completely shut down and walk away, or we will fight back so we might try and talk louder we might try shouting or yelling or getting angry or we might just talk over them or as I said we might just literally leave the room and think whatever I can't be bothered but either way we're either fighting or we're fleeing we're not actually in our power so truthfully the outer world is just a mirror to our inner world and I know you probably don't want to hear that because no, no one wants to hear that. We just want a quick tip to deal with these situations. But the truth is that's never really going to change anything because you may leave that job where that person that always talks over everyone is or, you know, have words with someone. But what you'll find, it, it will just keep repeating itself. Same situation, but different person because it's something within you and it's not in those people quote unquote outside and it's really reflecting our internal narrative our in our self-concept which is really formed from our conditioning growing up so it's not about beating yourself up we are all conditioned we all create thoughts feelings and beliefs based on how we were brought up how we were conditioned in our culture in our society but what it is about is it, it's about bringing awareness to it so you can kind of wake yourself up to see the illusion of what this really is. Because this is just, you're just seeing your old way of thinking, your old beliefs, your own thoughts, your old thoughts, your old beliefs, your conditioning around what is and isn't possible. And we really do fit together like puzzle pieces. We, we literally hand people scripts in a very unconscious way. Like, I want you to not listen to me because that's what I experienced growing up. No one listened to me. So that's normal for me to not be listened to. So most likely, if you find yourself in this and you resonate with this, then most likely you weren't listened to as a child in some shape or form. Maybe you got talked over. Maybe you were ignored. Maybe you were criticized. Maybe you were blamed. Maybe you were ostracized. It will show up in many, many different ways. But in some way, you probably didn't feel heard as a child. It could also be that you grew up in a large home and there was a lot of sort of fighting for attention. So it can show up in many different ways. But just start to pay attention and think about your own upbringing and what kind of experiences you had around expressing yourself growing up. And obviously as a voice coach, I'm really interested in this from a vocal perspective. And as I said, I mean, the voice doesn't lie. How we're feeling internally is always gonna be reflected in our voice and then in the world around us. So we cannot lie. And what I see with a lot of people is when they feel like they have no power in a situation and no one's listening to them, they'll pull their voice back. The pitch will drop they'll start swallowing their sound. 
they literally just it's almost like they've turned you know they've turned the car off they've pulled the key out of the ignition the the voice has lost power or they go the other way and they like start sort of almost like revving the engine and like right I'm going to start getting really really angry at this person but as I said at the beginning neither of those are really you're not in your power in either of those you are actually really saying I'm powerless and I feel helpless in this situation this is like desperation time so in psychology we call this a projection and we're projecting our internal stuff that we're often not even conscious of onto the external and so I want to talk about what we can do to bring back our power and actually start to step into our true expression and really be heard from the truest place and have people listening to us the first stage then is really to get into your body so often what we're trying to do is logically try and work stuff out from our mind but we want to get into our body into our heart and so soften your shoulders drop your jaw soften your jaw just take some deep belly breaths you can shut your eyes and just get into your body like ground into your body that's the very first thing to do and then take a deep breath <laughs> because the first stage, as I said about the projection, the first stage is really to pull back the projection and really start to, on a deep level, accept that what you're seeing is a part of you and it's got nothing to do with the outside world. I know every part of your mind's gonna be going, no, no, but it is those people. But truthfully, if this is a pattern, I can guarantee that doesn't matter where you go, you will always find people that don't listen to you. We also know it's not really real because we you can have 10 people in the same situation, exactly the same room in the same situation, and they will all have differing opinions on an experience or a person. So we know it's not in the person, it's in the mind of the beholder. So the first stage is to really pull that, pull back the projection. But we're doing this with compassion for ourselves. We're not blaming because this is what we're taught. We are taught from the young age that we are powerless, we're weak, we're victims in the world and things happen to us, people do things to us. So these horrible people that don't listen to me, but really we're seeing a part of our own mind. But it may not make sense to you at this point, it may be very unconscious, which is absolutely fine, just wherever you're at. But it's just to open that up a little bit, just to like slightly open that. Because if we continue to make it about out there and people out there, we're going to be in, we're going to be just dancing around in this forever and nothing is really going to change. And we'll probably just find ourselves getting really exhausted and overwhelmed because we're just in fight or flight mode all the time. We're either going for it and going into like battle or we're just running away all the time. But neither of which is where your true power lives. The next stage, and again, this is, you don't want to be sort of trying to do this from a logical place. You want to just get into your body when you do this and maybe go for a walk or go for a run or something where you can really sort of connect to your body more and ask yourself the following question. So if I'm accepting that I'm seeing an aspect of myself that may or may not make sense to me, what's the payoff for me in people not listening to me? What do I avoid by people not listening to me? Which might sound like a really weird question, but just sit with it. Because for me, I know when I really struggle with this, that I had a real internal conflict around being heard because part of me wanted to be heard, but a bigger part of me, and the bigger part will always win out, the fearful part will always win out, um, really saw it as a negative actually, because when I was listened to, I then got all my thoughts feelings and ideas literally kind of ripped to shreds so it was actually safer for people not to hear anything I said because then I didn't have to deal with that so just start to open it up for you like what's the payoff if no one listens to me what do I avoid what do I avoid having to express what do I avoid having to feel it's usually a feeling that we're trying to avoid a feeling of you know people not liking us and feeling criticized or judged there's something that we're trying to avoid and that's really really important and then it's really important to start to see that 
this self that's kind of created this conditioning to avoid you being heard isn't who you really are. So the true part of you knows its value, knows its worth, knows it's already confident, et cetera, et cetera. And it's starting to connect to that part of yourself more. And you can't connect to that part of yourself when you're up here. You have to really get into your body. And this is why meditation is so powerful. And actually, I literally just put a visualization up last week. This is why this is all so powerful, because it's a way of really connecting to our deeper self versus this kind of ego mind you know, fight, I've got to like battle with the world kind of mind that this is how we're taught to be in the world. These first two stages, you may take some time, you may, this might take you a couple of weeks. There's no right or wrong. You can, you don't need to do this in five minutes. Spend your time however best for you, but start to get to peel back the layers of the onion. What is really my fear of being heard? Because in some way, you don't want to be heard, but you've got to sort of peel back the onion on that because it may not be conscious. And you'd be like, no, no, I want to be heard. But actually think of a time where you were really heard and there was a kind of negative reaction, so to speak. And those feelings in our body are what we're normally trying to avoid. And then finally, when you have started to kind of explore that on a deeper level, then the final piece is to start to visualize how you want to show up in these meetings, how you want to show up when you are speaking. How do you want to feel in your body? How do you want your voice to sound? How do you want other people to react to you? Like really start to visualize it. Visualization is so incredibly powerful and so underutilized, like nothing is created out there in the world until it's first been an image in someone's mind. So we have to really see it in our mind before we see it out there. So really, really start to visualize yourself. Perhaps you've got a meeting coming up and you're really worried about a conversation that you know you're gonna have to have. So just visualize yourself standing in your power, feeling confident, feeling like you know, you know exactly what you're gonna say and you're open to what other people have to say you're feeling confident in your voice, your voice just works, it's powerful, it's authoritative, it's assertive, and you get your message across from a place of true power versus I've got to like battle my way to get my message across. So I hope this has helped. This is a little bit of a deeper video. This is a big part of my work with private clients because I believe that, as I said, the inner world drives the outer worlds. And so how your voice shows up is going to be dictated by your kind of self-concept and your sort of internal state. But as I said before, most of the time, we're just not conscious of it. That's why it doesn't make any logical sense. So if this doesn't resonate with your logical mind straight away, that's absolutely fine. But just keep paying attention to what shows up in your worlds. And if you keep seeing the same pattern, of people not listening, you know it's a part of you. If it's a one-off and one person doesn't listen to you, that's fine. But when you start to notice it's a pattern, it's a part of you that you really need to explore with kindness and with love to yourself. So thank you so much. If you are interested in finding out more about my private coaching and you'd like to explore this more in your own voice and go deeper than just the exercises, then have a look. The links below, you can schedule a free 20 minute consult with me. And I would love to talk more about this deeper approach with you and your voice. So thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you on next week's video.